Stage 8 will be the last chance for the sprinters to battle it out for victory until next Friday's 13th stage. Between now and then, they'll be tackling the cobbles of Roubaix and the tour's first real mountains. Dylan Grunewagen should be feeling confident after his commanding win yesterday, while the French sprinters will be determined to toast their national holiday with victory on Bastille Day. With a stressful and exhausting day to come on the cobbles tomorrow, the peloton once again made a languid start to the day's action. Marcus Burkhardt did poke his nose out at the front for a few kilometres, but he quickly decided against a full-on escape. Bit of comic relief there from the German as the pack caught him up. Sunweb's Lawrence Tenzam the next man to go. The veteran Dutchman, a last-minute call-up for the injured Wilco Kelderman, riding his 10th Tour de France. He was joined by Wanty's Marco Minard and Direct Energy's Fabian Grillier, the usual suspects getting their men into the breakaway. Well, Ten Dam soon left them to it, preferring to stay fresh for his leader, Tom Dumoulin, who's 1 minute and 26 seconds off the pace overall. Grillier and Minard stretching their lead out to over six minutes. On a Demar rolling through the intermediate sprint ahead of Fernando Gaviria and Peter Sagan, the Groupama FDJ leader, the likeliest Frenchman on paper to take the stage win today. A little bit of cloud cover for the first time on this tour after days of glorious sunshine, but the wind staying away as the peloton wound their way towards Amiens, slowly closing the gap on the two men up at the front. Grillier in his second breakaway of this tour after stage six, earning the most aggressive rider award. And Greg Van Avermaet grabbing himself another bonus second. They all count in the fight for yellow. After a relatively peaceful day, suddenly there was drama with 16 kilometers left. A crash in the peloton, some big names caught up in it as well, including the stage six winner Dan Martin. Quick steps Julian Alaphilippe also in there. Well, the peloton upping the tempo in the final kilometers, overtaking Grillier with 6K to go. And then it was over to the sprinters' teams. Philippe Gilbert having a go, but he was quickly caught. Sagan launching his sprint early. Greipel involved in a tussle with Gaviria, but for the second day running, it was Dylan Grunewagen who simply had too much in the tank. Well, the Lotto Jumbo man winning his second stage in some style, but this was perhaps the big story of the day. Dan Martin losing over a minute, and he is now two minutes and 47 seconds behind in the GC standings. He and the quick step leader, Philippe, both picking up minor injuries as well, which could be a problem for Roubaix. Uh, yeah, the legs are better every day, and uh, today I feel me also good. Uh, it was a fast final, uh, a lot of corners, uh, but the team did an amazing job. Uh, and my position was good, and I saw Gaviria and Greipel are fighting for, uh, for the position, but uh, yeah, I saw the finish line, and I, I was thinking uh, this is the moment. And I was going, and uh, yeah, it was a good win. Well, in the end, Greipel and Gaviria were relegated after a tussle at the finish. Sagan moving up to second with John Dagenkolb in third place on the stage. Greg Van Avermaet remains in the yellow jersey for a sixth straight day. That's twice as many as he had in 2016. Now the 2017 Paris-Roubaix winner will be looking to do some damage on the cobbles. Stage 9 has long been identified as one of the key stages of this tour. The GC contenders will be very wary of getting caught out between Arras and Roubaix. There'll be 15 cobbled sectors to cover, a shade under 22 kilometres. It could be a day that lives long in the memory, especially of France, a later crowned football world champions. Thanks for watching and do join us again Sunday as we visit the roads of Paris-Roubaix, the hell of the north.